All right. Uh, welcome everybody to our monthly infrastructure special interest group meeting. Um, we'll uh, start by looking over uh, the state of initiatives, um, starting with anything completed, uh, then move on to any new business. Uh, if anybody has new business that they uh, haven't already added to the agenda, please do so as we go along. Um, one change I made, uh, started making last time and completed before this was that uh, we sort of decided on a prioritization of uh, our initiatives last time. Um, and there's a list of them there at the top of the agenda. Uh, I've also tried my best to go through uh, the detailed aspect part of the uh, initiatives and uh, reorder them so that they match uh, that prioritization list um, so that as we go through them, um, we're effectively going through them in priority, the priority order uh, as we've identified the priorities. Um, and we should change things as we go if something uh, has become less of a priority due to uh, just not being a problem as much or um, having potentially made some progress on it that makes other things uh, potentially more important. All right, um, that being said, uh, so I know of one completed item that I'll start with, uh, and I know it can, I completed it. Um, if there's other items that got completed, uh, feel free to throw them on there. Um, but so I'll, I'll skip on down to that completed section, right, which is we, we are keeping uh, a running track of it at the very end. Um, so that item that got completed was form an infra cleanup, comma, uh, uh, dealing with the CI directory. Um, so there is, a, there is a post out on discourse in the infra sig group um, detailing uh, the progress as we were making it here. Uh, the high level is that we uh, moved all of our Jenkins jobs out to a new Jenkins jobs repository. Um, so it's just the job definitions. Uh, it's all the Groovy, it's all the YAML, it's all the JJB configs. Um, we've gone and updated, added a README to it. Um, We've updated the README and form an infra to uh, the Jenkins doc and form an infra. We previously added to reflect uh, the operational side of Jenkins rather than the job side of Jenkins. Um, and then we have uh, also updated the name of the job in Jenkins that does the job updates. Uh, so now if you uh, make a change to a job uh, in this new repo on merge uh, that Jenkins jobs update job will run and update the jobs um, every time we merge uh, a change. Um, on the form and infra side, uh, we reduce the scope of the Jenkins job puppet module significantly uh, so that now it deploys uh, and clones the Jenkins jobs repo. Uh, it runs uh, Jenkins job builder on just the Jenkins job update job. So effectively it's designed to bootstrap the process, um, create that initial job, and then that initial job will clone Jenkins jobs and populate everything and manage everything uh, from that point on. Um, there were a number of pull requests open still um, for yeah, from different lengths of time, uh, chain updating jobs. Uh, I have commented on all of them and set the waiting on contributor flag to identify them. Um, I figured I would give one to two weeks for uh, authors to notice it, go in, um, either move move the change over or just close the PR altogether uh, by their own choice, decide what to do with it. And then after one to two weeks or so, uh, I will just go through and close the pull request with an additional message uh, such that format infra is fully cleaned up at that point and uh, the open PRs are dedicated to what it manages uh, in this new world. 
uh, any questions or concerns with the that uh, process from here on out or the changes that we made here? All right, I'll go back to the top. I assume you guys can can actually hear me since everybody's video is off for me. Somebody yep. give me a sound check. Okay, cool. Um, all right. So the first on our initiative list uh, that was the highest priority was the ci.centos.org limits that we are running into the testing matrix. Um, Les, do you wanna? Give updates here, Evgeny. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so I did start it, but not completed yet. <clears throat> All I did so far is um, go into our Jenkins definition and actually have the Debian and uh, CentOS uh, like pipeline definitions, like for installation and upgrade, having two two different variables, and then still. Uh, combine them to one uh, combined. So the execution currently is still running on combined. And then I split up the plugins job that I created like a month or two ago. And that seems to work just fine with, with the uh, only CentOS or only Debian definition. So the next steps would be to follow the same procedure and also split up um, the foreman jobs, which then would match what we do in nightly. And I guess we would need to have the release process updated to kick off two jobs, con con like not in parallel, but one after another. So you've laid the groundwork for doing the split, but we haven't done the split. Correct. Uh, and I assume with the past couple of weeks of releases, we are still doing having to do sort of the dance of run at once, whichever ones fail, only run that set. That's what I've observed. Um, Correct. All right. Um, we have done some exploration on other infrastructure. Is there anything there to share yet, Evgeny? Nope. Um, I will at least make a, a note that we are, we are exploring uh, what the IBM Cloud might could give us. Um, yeah, and my, the, the sponsors that I asked for, um, they uh, have asked, I think HP is their hardware vendor, and they asked for a quote. And whenever that comes back, I think it's like yeah. part of a bigger order. So um, if, if the quote is nice enough, then we'll probably get some hardware there. Uh, which sponsorship was that? Canova. Any other comments, questions, concerns about the ci.centos.org testing matrix limits? I don't know if it was ex explored, but um, 
We should also talk about the RHEL for open source initiatives uh, offer. And if we can use that as well. I don't know if it's on the agenda now. Uh, it is not under new business, but... Uh... I'll put it on there. Uh, all right. Uh, next up uh, was is Koji running out of space. Um, we did do some or did some work in this area. Uh, we had laid out on discourse uh, after the last discussion a plan for uh, sort of what we could clean up and the order we could clean them up in. Um, I did an initial pass here, uh, which removed uh, all locally synced fedoras uh, and uh, converted current fedora usages um, to external URL. Uh, related to this, I did a um, added management of external repos um, to form an infra via an Ansible collection uh, that was available. Uh, so the full list of Foreman, uh, sorry, not Foreman, Koji external repos that we um, use uh, are available uh, there. Uh, so you know, the encouragement would be if you need to add a new one or change something or modify one, you open a pull request to form an infra to modify it, merge it, uh, and then we run it. Um, I think I got the space down. Uh, to quite a quite I removed quite a bit of space, removing that at least that immediate problem that we were running into where Koji was reporting like 97% disk full. Um, so I think we should still finish doing the full cleanup because there's definitely some old, still some old crufty stuff in there that, that we can get rid of, as well as uh, we're on the verge of being able to get rid of EL5 um, for client repos. Uh, and then that should allow us to close out this story, uh, but at least the immediate need, like I said, of uh, running out of disk space has been alleviated for the, for the moment. Um, any other questions or concerns? No questions or concerns. I can't remember if I heard you mention that we basically moved as much as we can to the CDN instead of local repos. Uh, I had done, I think I did the Fedora, and I know that you did. Uh, I did basically all of the um, currently supported CentOS stuff. Yeah, so I and think Apple. Yeah. And Apple. So a lot of the major stuff is now fetching uh, over HTTP to external mirrors. Uh, there's still a good bit of stuff to just that will get cleaned up and removed uh, or. Uh, I think phased out in the near term. Uh, and then there's moving. I think we can move Puppet over to point at Puppet Labs as efficient repos as well. March. Uh, next up, um, CentOS Stream. <clears throat> um, we had said previously that uh, We were looking at when we'd want to target a release of it, getting it uh, bootstrapped into nightly, so we kind of get we get it running, we get it used to. Uh, we're gonna go, you know, Foreman 2.4, Catella 4 would release on regular CentOS 8, um, and 
keep an eye out on clarity around CentOS H stream uh, and also um, kind of need to solve the matrix problem given that this adds yet another entry to our testing matrix. Um, I did see that one of the biggest gaps uh, of getting pointed to me out to me that has been closed in that they are now producing stream vagrant boxes. Sorry, I'm just grabbing, grabbing a link. Um, so I guess it still feels like, unless someone uh, wants to correct me there, that uh, it's really just about finding the time to start bringing these online into our nightly testing pipelines, uh, and that may largely be predicated on the capacity of said pipelines. Um, given that our nightly pipelines are already split across e -inter e Enterprise Linux and uh, Debian, um, do we expect that if we put uh, enabled this for nightly, started testing and enabled it for nightly, that we'd actually hit those limits? No, it should be just fine for nightly right now. <clears throat> I think. Um, Enterprise Linux nightly is currently four jobs, like seven and eight, both install and upgrade. And we would add essentially two more, like stream eight install and stream eight upgrade, which get us to six, which runs just fine right now. Um, does anybody have a desire for us to push for this for the next form and release or to keep on with it as, as we have time to try it out locally, feel good about it, then just add it to nightly and then see how it progresses. I think I prefer the latter, um, only cause then it wouldn't like, um, we'd be able to feel confident about when we want to put it into a release. And so that way it wouldn't like block it until we felt confident it wouldn't block it, I guess. But maybe that would mean like, I don't know, I guess what would give it the sense of urgency to have it get done or whatnot. But I don't know. I think we should spin up or modify forklift to be able to at least provision them. And once we have that, we can do one run locally to see if it's totally broken or it at least installs a base foreman. And once we know that, we can actually say something useful about pipelines. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah, it sounds like a good precursor action item we can do. Okay. All right. Uh, moving on to archiving old Debian releases. I finally did my homework. So um, I sat down some day last week and set up a new vhost on our web machine that would be able to host the archive. Uh, in the spirit of staging dab, I called it archive dab. Um, if anybody yells at me, I can still re rename it, but 
right now it's archived app it's working um i also added a cdn to it so it's not being paid out of our, our pocket in terms of bandwidth even though i don't expect too much uh, traffic on it and currently i added like um one one release i think it was debian squeeze or so because that was the smallest one just for fancies and try it. it it works fine so um it is also using the, the same like gpg key and everything so just switching over the url is is sufficient for anybody who want to use it and my proposal would just to go and for example next monday or the week after that move everything that has a one in the first digit move it over to the archive um, in numbers that would mean that we like today our debian archive is i'm looking at my data 72 gigabytes and everything that is 1.x is 45 gigabytes so we would move that out and i'd expect like the normal debian package publishing time to be cut in half ish because it doesn't have to scan all the old data anymore um so yeah that that's roughly what i'm i have prepared and what i can offer you and uh if anybody is curious i do see like i did look in the logs i do see um at least people fetching um uh package lists currently from from the debian uh for all the debian releases i don't see many but a few fetches for actual content but that looked like something that actually crawling like the whole site and doing a, a full mirror because it also would pull down like older packages of the same archive like for foreman what i'd gonna say like 1.16 1. or so it would pull down both the final release and rcs so it's really something that's mirroring the side quick question looks like, i'm just browsing through the dev disks and looks like there's some copies of some of them for no. some reason with the date timestamp no it's not a copy it's a symlink it just mm. looks weirdly in the oh. UI. Um, <clears throat> so uh, from your, what you said there, what are you thinking March 8th, March 15th? Um, I'm out on the 15th, so it's either 8th or 16th. Like, I don't care too much for an exact date. Just tell me something, I'll do it if I'm in. That's the only limitation. Pick a day, any day. Yeah, I don't see think that we need any like long term announcement. If people have those old installation installed, they're not getting any updates anyways. And um, I'll add some uh, README part to Debs the Foreman Org saying that old releases are now on archive. And um, if somebody has it configured and f find like an error in their um, apt output, they'll go to the site and see, oh, it's moved now. I think that's fair enough. Yeah, I think it's good, but I would also post something in this course, maybe already like a heads up. Yeah, yeah, sure. Excellent. Well, I'm gonna put the eight thing because uh... We get faster builds for Debian, why wait? Um, would, would we want uh, any sort of rough policy for going forward, how often we move something over uh, to the archive site to ensure that we're uh, not just re-slowing ourselves down and then uh, doing a mass dump again. Uh, 
technically we need to keep for 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 our our own like uh, pipelines and make it our lives easier to keep the current supported and the last two unsupported versions on the same side because that would allow us to have our current pipelines using them just fine so but could we add a i guess a new release branching task of we just do minus two over to archive then yeah something like that minus two minus four pick a low enough number and you're good i don't know tomer do we have uh, like stats how much legacy users we have um we have the raw data we need to make that into stats if we want to get that um i'm trying to think if any of the upgrade tests using even older version or not i don't remember what uh, version they start from they start at mi minus two so we have the upgrade testing in jenkins as a ci job but that uses a git checkout and that uses form 117 from the top of my head but that's a git checkout so that shouldn't be affected okay good yeah that, that was what i was worried about i don't know about some ancient version that we upgrade from somewhere um okay and i think one year is a reasonable time that means versions that have been unsupported for half a year already um so let's say um it's uh, i would add it not to the branching but to the actual release so that we have like two supported versions and two unsupported versions on the main site at any time mm -hmm. Did I do that math right? Um, I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it looks correct to me. It's, it's a lot of confidence. Like off, off by <laughs> one, <or. laughs> Okay. Would it so that if we archive our PMs as well after five no, four releases, or does that help us in any way? It doesn't help us. Okay. Clean up from Koji. Different question. <laughs> In your mouth, N is nightly or N would be G A. That uh... so now when two dot four comes out in a week or two, that means we can archive two dot O. I think when two dot four comes out, that means that two dot three is supported, and two dot three needs two dot one. And nightly is at 2.5, so nightly minus 5 is roughly what you need. So you need, yeah. yeah. 2.4 minus 5 is 2.0. Right? Or do I have the off by 1 or no? So basically, 2.4 <laughs> is out. Nightly is at 2.5. Uh, 2.3 is supported. 2, 2 and 2.1 are unsupported. And 2.0 are archived. Yes, math is hard. I think that that's why hard. I went to computer science, so the computer would do the math for me. <laughs> I am right there with you. <clears throat> All right. Uh, any updates or anything on auto building Nibian on PR merge? Take silence as no. Moving on. Uh, Netways Jenkins node migration. It has been moved. Well, recreated. So this can go to the 
completed section. Excellent, uh, two completed items. And we're like a week away from completing another item. All right. Uh, any updates on rack space migrations? I assume no, because I haven't heard or seen anything. No, but it looks like we can change the uh, target date for Jenkins. Because it's sometime before 2.4 branching, and we've done that. Let's be optimistic and do it before the 2.5 branching. Uh, I assume same thing with red mine migration, no updates there. Any updates around rebuilding Koji? No updates at this time. Thank you. Um, any updates on use of Jenkins files? All uh, right. Uh, yeah. Is that something, or are you just saying now? Yeah, no update. Uh, any new sponsor update? Still, still waiting on reply. Yeah, um, I I clarified a bit of hardware requirements from our side, and as mentioned earlier, they will be or they have. I, I'm not sure about that. Um, put our machine as part of a bigger order to their hardware supplier and um, see what the quote says. Okay. Uh, any CDN for website updates? Untouched. Great. Then we have completed item. So, <clears throat> on to new business. Debian signing key needs extension. Yeah, so the GPG key for which we use for Debian signing is expiring, I think, end of March or something like this. And I've like I have no idea what the current official process of ours is. Just extend it, create a new one, um, and resign everything. Um, what we did last time was extend it because we didn't plan ahead and we had to do something in a short amount of time. Um, that's not a good reason to do it again, but given that it's going to be happening at the end of the month, we're already pretty close to the point. So, um, I think we need to, because we use the same key for 2.3 and 2.2 releases, which are still going to be updated. And I think it's going to be more painful to switch the key to something else. Um, so maybe we can start to at least start sign nightly differently, um, but I think we need more time to plan it. So short time, short term, extend it, then make a plan to rotate it. Okay. And this is different than RPM, where we use one key per release. Debian's use the same key for many releases. Okay. All right. Um, I'm pretty sure next up on there was the rel, because I can't seem to get in my head what Rossi stood for, but for some reason Rossi sticks in my head. Was it rel for open source infrastructure? Yeah. Right. Yeah, the OSI is open source infra. 
Okay. Um, so we're, I would assume, we're all aware if not that the, the part of this CentOS 8 stream and making RHEL more usable and testable, they put out a, a one post or so with uh, that you can open source projects can get, I think it's up to 16 subscriptions for use within their build and CI environments for the use of testing and. Uh, I thought it was unlimited. Well, is it unlimited? Why do I have 16 stuck in my head? 16 is the devil subscription. And uh, Rossi is, I think, 200 by default, but you can get extensions if you need to. Um, yeah, they, I think it's they had to have a number for the entitlement. Yeah. Okay. So, thoughts, comments here? I don't see us needing it unless we want to officially say we support RHEL. Well, the, there's two parts to it. The first part is indeed to support, to test it in CI. Um, the other part is do we actually want to build on RHEL rather than, than on central stream, which will happen in, we need to make the choice in the year. And Actually, there's a third part, which is, do we want to run our own infra on uh, on rail or on stream? Now I see Evgeny shaking his head, and I think I agree that for us, um, building on stream is fine. I mean, most of our machines are um, in Jenkins nodes anyway, so it's good to see what will fill in future sooner rather than later. Um, so yeah, I do think that uh, we want our own infra on central stream, that's fine. Um, as for building on rail, I can't really answer that. You mean like building in Koji against rail? Yeah. Against rail. Which would mean that we need to mirror the repositories again, which we just get rid of. Um, well, not only that, but... but... That I think will need a little discussion with whoever to make sure because we don't want to accidentally violate our agreement by providing free rail repos to the world. So that'll be interesting. That's a good thing, Jack. And yeah, but if we if we do this, I wouldn't necessarily want to host the repos on Koji anyway, but put up a new machine or something that could host the repos that we can still use external repos for, manage separately in the same network. Um, I, <clears throat> because of the way I structured it here, I just want to test. My assumption is if we were going to build against RHEL, it would be for the, the intent of testing in CI and providing like to users that we have tested and support running Foreman on rail. Yeah, I think yeah. that if you build it, you have to test it. You can't really just build it and throw it out there and say, well, this is it. Well, we do it today. <laughs> yes, well, but Usually yeah, it's at yeah. least a lag behind state of rail. Yeah, and if we actually want to run in CI, currently we run in um, central CI, and then we need some way to get actual images there and our provide, protect our secrets, and that might also be challenging. I don't know how we would deal with that properly. I would assume CentOS CI is probably already on the ball with being able to provide rail images for people who use it. Yeah, but the trick for us is we are very vagrant so that we have that common 
shared way of doing things. And yeah. I, I know there are rail boxes on Vagrant. I don't know if those are violate any sort of, you know, terms and agreements of how it should, it's supposed to be allowed. Not a lawyer, but I am pretty sure they violate. Um, regarding the billing, there is a question though, since we're now starting to build everything on CentOS 8, which is going to die in a year or less than a year. Um, what are we going to be building on going forward? Would we build on stream or what they, do we do? I think that was part of the building in Koji. We would build against the rail OSI if we can. So basically the latest rail eight through the rail OSI license. What why don't we want to go for stream? Because stream's not if you build against stream, it's not backwards compatible to the latest or forward compatible, whatever the term they use. It's not guaranteed to work on a previously released version. If you build on a previously released version, it's guaranteed to work on stream. No. Well, yeah, guaranteed. But it's guaranteed to work on a production system which m might not be running on stream. And yeah. Well, oh. and with stream streaming um, around, I guess it's kind of building against a moving target. Yeah, the um, I think if I remember correctly, the statement for stream was they would let let they try to keep stream backwards compatible on the same major number. Yeah. Whether it's actually that right now, that's you know. The source for bugs, but the file. Well, we, oh, we do we have do some have... challenges, like um, the SLINX policy package. When we build our SLINX policies, we look at what is available in our build route, and then copy that to the requirements. Um, so that means that if Central Stream would release a newer SLINX policy package, that would end up in our former SLINX package as a requirement. That's unavailable on rel, so form would become uninstallable on rel. I think long term we would need to be testing against stream to make sure we're compatible with the next rel, but we would probably need to be building on rel if we want to be um, installable on actual rels and whatever Rocky Alma clones people might end up using instead. I think I think that it's, I don't know if it's explicitly stated, but at least the implicitly understood goal is we want to use rail as the source base of truth for anything that comes after, unlike where we're at today with CentOS, and we assume rail compatibility. I think I said that right. Probably didn't. Yeah, and it sounds like we need to figure out if we can legally do that with the licenses that we have and the technical side of Koji. Yeah. Uh, if I'm being honest, I got a little lost on where we are landing with respect to uh, build on and support on. So if I'll try to sum it up, uh, with my understanding, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, the goal long term would be build on rel eight, test against center stream, and support implicitly on rel clones because it was built on rel and should be working. Uh, and I guess that's also on the Yeah, and that depends on if we can build on rel. If we cannot build on rel, I don't think we can support our clones. Um, test against CentOS 8 stream, not CentOS 8. That's the thing. Um, and rel, obviously, because we want to make sure what we build actually works.
No, that's on yes, on rail eight as well. I think is what he was saying. Yeah, yeah. So, I think my one concern is how this model, for me, unless I'm missing something, this model will fall down when CentOS 9 stream comes out, in, at least in the sense that we have, we, if once CentOS 9 stream comes out, theoretically we can get ahead of the ball game for 9. But if we have to build on, but we build our model around building on RHEL, then we would have to wait until RHEL 9 was available before we could even start the 9 process because we would be wanting to build on it. So I think once Stream 9 is out, we would start building on Stream 9. And once RHEL 9.0 is out, we would switch to building on RHEL 9. Probably in parallel with RHEL 8 because we support two versions usually. Yeah, I, I envision it being that way. We would, I don't want to say special case it, but with Stream 9, we would primarily do Stream 9 until such time we have access to Rail 9 bits. But doesn't doesn't that mirror the way that it would it would make sense to go up the stream, right? Like, I guess, wouldn't it be, it would be like Fedora to... Uh, Rel nine stream to Rel nine. I would nice. say probably uh, um, we wouldn't officially support it on Rel nine until Rel nine is actually out, since stream would be yeah. still kind of a moving target uh, at that point. Um, and only once Rel nine is out, we can say we support it on Rel nine, but we would actually already have the builds because we started building on stream earlier. Uh, right. I guess just from the point of view of like having tried to get it on Braille 8 beforehand or whatever, that's useful just because uh, yeah. not having a, an upstream version to do that with is, is difficult. Yeah, I think uh, we the uh, issue we had with getting to L8 uh, was really uh, something that Stream actually is going to fix for us because we can actually build it before yeah. it comes out. Theoretically, Stream 9 will be out way before RHEL 9 is anywhere close to landing in public hands. Yeah, so we'll have time to get uh, the whole build process prepared and everything. Yeah, also looking ahead, um, I think the end of life date of CentOS 8 stream is earlier than RHEL 8. I think it's uh, yeah. 2024. 24. Yeah. And well, it's Rel the end of the. Of it. Yeah, it's the end of uh, level two support for RHEL 8 yeah. as well. It's, uh, when, once RHEL goes into maintenance mode, CentOS stream goes dead, basically. I think I need to think we can also this. hope that by then we CentOS uh, 9 or RHEL 9 is stable enough that we can just drop 8. Yeah. Yeah, there's going to be, I think, a two year overlap between the major versions. It's going to be every three years a new version comes out, supported for five. There's a few things that we could just, like I said, think on that I'm. Curious to think about for things like <clears throat> what this, what building on rel implies for having to wait for doing some things like, say a new Ruby, say a new version of Ruby enters App Stream and it's available on CentOS App Stream. We can't for building on rel eight. We have to wait until a rel eight release of that comes out to then be able to tackle that new Ruby versus being able if it was on CentOS App Stream have the potential to use and build against that new Ruby. And I just use that example of, I don't know how to wrap my brain around that right now or how to think about it, but it's one of the thoughts I had around, like oh. it feels like, right. One of the things we encountered today kind of is that we are, 
we want to get to newer versions of our stacks and we're always waiting because we're so far down the stream waiting for those packages to arrive. I guess um, if uh, it's only available in stream, you wouldn't be able to use those packages you built on rel anyways. Um, the only, maybe the only thing I, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, just maybe I thought that maybe for nightlies we could also try um, stream bits as well. So I the, the only, the only way to support yeah, it. Right. Yeah, sorry. I was going to say about basically the same thing. The only way to do that is we would have to find at least a segment that we will also build against stream. All right. Let's leave uh, actually the last five minutes for the, to get through the, because there's one more topic and that's a lot to noodle along with this rail idea. Uh, OSCI.io, whoever added that, go for it. Um, it was me. Um, OSCI.io is um, an open source infrastructure services initiative backed by Red Hat. Um, I learned about them from, from the Pulp project because they recently moved their um, fixtures.pulpproject.org there. And it looked quite interesting because they offer, as far as I see, also OpenShift for um, open source pro projects. And we have a few apps that we run on a more containerized uh, infra, like um, Discourse and Redmine both run or did run in containers. So that's something that we could use for, for those services. I have no further uh, knowledge about it yet. Um, just if if you want to explore this direction, we could. I was on the pulp team when they adopted it, and yeah, I mean they were pulp was early adapters of their initiative. So it sounds like they've come a long way after hosting OpenShift now, but they're worth a peek, definitely. Okay. So the action items is for us to just take a look at it, think about it, think about what we might could take advantage of or uh, yeah. how they might could help us. Maybe Evaluation we basically. Them what they can offer. Okay. Sounds good. All right, uh, I will post said meeting notes uh, on uh, discourse. Um, if anybody picks up a topic here that doesn't already have a post uh, on the InfraSig discourse uh, topic, I would highly encourage when you pick, if you pick something up or working on it, start a post there to just track its progress and have dedicated communication in between these uh, meetings around it. And uh, I know we'll, by the next time we see each other, we'll at least have one thing, one more thing completed. Let's see if we can get maybe one or two, uh, one or two more done in the next month. Um, and unless anybody has any final words, I you know, will say a big thank you guys. Do you, need, do you want to say something, Tomer? Yep. Uh, a big thank you, guys, uh, for continued participation, continued work in this area, um, and continuing to work to improve our infrastructure, address these both issues and improvements, um, you know, seeing stuff get on the completed list uh, and spending some of your time on it. And it's very uh, appreciated by myself, and I know the community as a whole, uh, appreciates it even if they don't know that it's happening uh, which is probably the way that it uh, we know we're doing it right if uh, they don't know that it's happening all right
that, uh, I'll stop the recording and uh, see you guys next time. Thanks.